this is Anne of Anne Was Here. Today I'm going to show you part two of my video creating a half drop repeat in Photoshop. So if you haven't seen that first video, um, I would recommend going and watching that before you watch this because this will make a lot more sense if you watch that first because that video shows you how to create a pattern in Photoshop like I have here. This video shows you how to extract your seamless repeat from what we've designed here. Um, so again, go back and watch that video if you haven't seen it yet. It's one of the first videos I posted called Creating a Half Drop Repeat in Photoshop. So this is where I left you um, when you watched that video and a lot of people had questions about how you can extract your seamless repeat from um, this file. So if you remember from the last video, I recommended that you write down the pixel dimensions of your vertical drop and your horizontal um, slide. Um, and let me just for a refresher show you what I mean by that. So here, this piece here, um, right here, was my original. And then this one I dropped down. So if I double click on the offset um, in the layers palette, if I double click on this, it brings it back up and I can see there's my vertical drop of 1476. So that's how I know what that is. And then if I click on one that's over to the right and see my horizontal slide is 1576. And then this 738 is the half drop because 738 is half of 1476. But we don't need that to extract our pattern. So really we're worried about this horizontal 1476 and the vertical 1476. So what you want to do is take your selection tool, which is normally set at normal, and you want to switch it to fixed size. And I've, I've already inputted here um, my pixel dimensions, but what I did is I put the, the vertical under height, which is 1476 pixels, and the horizontal under width, which is 1576. And then when you go to make your selection, it it's stuck at this exact pixel dimension. And you can slide it around and really pick any spot on here. So whatever you think looks good as like the, the little swatch. So say I do there. And then I'm gonna go to crop and hit enter. And this takes a little bit of time because my file is um, pretty big because of all the, the smart object repeating that I have in it. So then what I would do is I would save this file um, flattened probably as my seamless repeat. And you have to remember that it's a half drop. So if you just slide it to the right, it's not going to line up. It needs to be dropped down. So say you want to fill a, um, you know, you're, you're, you need to submit a 8.5 by 11 sheet with your repeat built out. I would create a new document. And I would take um, that, my swatch and I'm copying it and I'll paste it in my new document and then oops I made two copies and then what I would do is just start filling it in by dragging and making a copy I'm holding down alt and dragging to automatically make a copy and then see how it doesn't repeat horizontally that's because we need to do the half drop so I'm holding shift and dragging down which holding shift means it will drag it in a straight line I'm holding shift and dragging down. It's going in a perfectly straight line. And then Photoshop has these smart hot pink lines, like guides, that are, it's telling me you've reached the halfway point. So I can drop it right there. And then I'm going to grab both of those layers and just pull it down to do my vertical until it lines up per perfectly. I'm going to pull it up to get this one and down to get this one. And there I have my 8.5 by 11 sheet perfectly filled out with my um, one swatch of my, re my seamless repeat. Um, this isn't the most precise way to do it. If you wanted to, you could actually take that first swatch that you dropped in 
and apply um, the offset that we did for the original pattern. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to convert this to a smart object and make a copy. And then if I, oops, if I go in and do my filter other offset, um, and then I'm going to clear these out because it's remembering, and do 1476 down, and then do another one, drag another copy, and do negative 1476 because that will go up, and then drag another one, clear this out, and do a, my horizontal 1576 with the half of 738. And as you can see, that's this is like the precise way to build it out. But you know, with the Photoshop guides, I find it just as easy to drag and do it myself um, quickly. So you can also bring your Photoshop pattern, that the swatch that we've created, into Illustrator to create a seamless repeat. So if I've got here a dress outline shape that I created in Illustrator. And um, say I want to fill this dress with my pattern. I'm going to paste that same swatch into Illustrator. Now this is a photo, it's an image. It's not a vector file. Um, so this is more if you want to do hand-painted patterns or um, really textury patterns like mine um, and bring them into Illustrator to fill objects as patterns. Um, so what, I, what you do is you drop it in and then I would scale it down to the size that you want it to look when it once it's applied to that dress. So you, you can do it more technically, but I'm just going to drag it till I think it looks like a good scale and that looks good to me. And then I'm just going to drag that swatch into my swatches palette and you can delete it once you've done that. And then double click the new swatch that you've created and this patterns options palette pops up and right now it's repeating it not as a half drop just as a regular grid re repeat which isn't going to work for ours so all you need to do is go click on this down arrow by tile type and pick brick by column because that is basically a half drop repeat and there it's fixed it and it's perfectly repeating it so it's much easier to do in Illustrator actually than Photoshop um, and then I'm just going to hit up here, done. Okay, so now I have that um, repeat pattern in my swatch palette. So if I select my dress and have the fill um, selection in front and then click on my new swatch, it fills the dress with my pattern. And I can get rid of the stroke if I want by, oops, by clicking on that and Xing it out. So then I just have the dress shape with my pattern in it. So um, I hope this is helpful um, in better understanding how once you've created a pattern using, you can really use any size initial palette um, or canvas. Like, let's see. So I just usually create a canvas size based on what my project is and how big I need the pattern to be. If, if I don't know yet and I'm just creating a pattern, I make it fairly large. Um, and then but then you don't have your perfect tile. So that's how you, you know, all these steps get you down to selecting your perfect tile that you can either use in Photoshop, you could submit that, you can upload it to Spoonflower, or you can go into Illustrator and use it this way like I just showed you. So I hope that um, clears some things up for you guys. And thanks again for following me on YouTube and subscribing to my channel. Hope you have a great day. Bye.